good morning. Thank you for coming out and joining us on this Sunday as we worship our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, and we lift him up with here at Pilgrim Branch Missionary Baptist Church in the land of Goshen Springs, 4033 Highway 71, 471. Um, we're going to go ahead and go into um, prayer, and then we'll read a scripture. May we all bow. Father, how great and awesome you are. Father, how wise you are. How merciful you are. How faithful you are to those who have fallen short of your glory. How merciful and faithful you are to those who have strayed away from your will. How merciful and faithful you are to for us as people who neglect you day in and day out. Even for us believers who are fragile and weak. Father, sometimes we, we lose faith in who you are. But you've been also faithful and you've had unconditional love for us, and we thank you for that, Father. Father, we come before you confessing our sins, Father, all of our secrets, all of the sins that we commit in the dark. Father, we, we bring them to the light before you today, Father. Father, we know that, that, that you are a just God, and that you, you punish those who who sin against you and at the same time father you discipline those who you love and you still remain faithful and bless us and still clothe us and provide for us even in our sickness even in our darkness even in our secrets father we bring them before you today father it's it's, it's us in the church who who know your word who know your will who know your commandments, and we still fail to follow after you, Father. We ask for forgiveness, Father. Father, for our lustful passions. Father, for our, our, our need for attention from the world, Father. From, our, from our, the way we clothe ourselves day in and day out, Father. How we clothe ourselves for the world and not for you. Father, you don't search for beauty in, in, in appearance. Father, you search for it in our hearts. Father, we ask that you would, you would renew our hearts. Even for the ones who, who, who are lost, Father, we ask that you would bring them to the light, that you would guide them as an old person walking across the street, Father. We ask that you would, you would take them by the hand and walk them across the street, Father. Walk them into your kingdom, Father. All of us have sinned. All of us are broken. All of us are in need of you. Father, we, we, we thank you. We thank you for being faithful to us, even in our sin, in the midst of our sin. Father, we, we pray for our leaders. Father, we know that you're the king of all kings. Jesus, our Lord and Savior, you gave him, you've given him all the authority and all the rule and all his power and might that he ruled the nations. Father, we, we, we know Satan has no control over pandemics. Anything that he's allowed to do comes from your permission, Father. You punish those who are wicked. You watch over those who are innocent. You control everything that moves and does on this earth. Father, we know that everything is in your hands. Father, we know that you protect us. And we ask for that protection as we go throughout our days. Father, protect us from COVID-19. Father, protect us from the, 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 the evils of this world. 
Father, some of us live in cities where there's a lot of violence, Father. The city of Jackson, Father, they're, they're hearing record numbers, Father. Father, we ask that you would change the heart of everyone in that city, Father. We pray that you would, you would bless it, Father, even in the city and communities that we are in, Father, even in, in the cities and communities around Pilgrim Branch, Father. We ask that you would, you would work in the hearts of the people in these communities, that you would send out your workers, Father, and that they will start working right now in your communities, Father, that they will bring the children up in the knowledge of you, that education won't be so much about school and the things that will perish away, Father, but it will be about you, Father, and your glory, Father. May they be educated in you, Father, that they might have eternal life, that they might have eternal wisdom, that they might have eternal salvation, Father. Father, we ask all these things in your precious Son, Jesus' name. Amen. The scripture for today will come from 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 10. And it's talking about divisions in the church. It says, I appeal to you, dear brothers and sisters, by the authority of our Lord Jesus Christ, to live in harmony with each other. Let there be no divisions in the church, rather be of one mind united in thought and purpose for some member of chloe's household have told me about your quarrels my dear brothers and sisters some of you are saying i'm a follower of paul others are saying i follow apollos or i follow peter or i follow only christ has christ been divided into factions was I, Paul, crucified for you? Were any of you baptized in the name of Paul? Of course not. I thank God that I did not baptize any of you except for Christophus and Gaius. For now, no one can say they were baptized in my name. Oh, yes, I also baptized the household of Stephanus, but I don't remember baptizing anyone else. For Christ didn't send me to baptize, but to preach the good news, and not with clever speech. For fear that the cross of Christ would lose its power. Once again, though, we thank God for his grace and his mercy and what he continues to do in our lives. God is a good God and he is worthy to be praised. Amen. Amen. Thank God for his grace and his mercy. Though. Let us let us bow in a word of prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord God Almighty, it is your servant again that has come before your people. Heavenly Father, we pray, Lord Jesus, in the name of Jesus, 
As you look toward your servant, dear Heavenly Father, we ask right now that you will bless my heart, bless my mind, bless my voice in a mighty way, dear Heavenly Father. Use me, Lord Jesus, how you see fit, dear Heavenly Father. Hide me behind your cross, Lord Jesus, so that people don't see me, but they see you, Lord Jesus. It's not about me, but it's about you, dear Heavenly Father. We lift you up in the name of Jesus, dear Heavenly Father. We glorify your holy name before, because you are worthy to be praised. We thank God for this time. We thank God for this moment. We thank God for this hour, dear Heavenly Father. We praise your holy name. These are all blessed. We ask in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Well, hallelujah. It is good to be back here again, though, to, to, to witness to the Lord how good he is, though. We thank God for his grace and mercy. We thank God for the pastor. Amen. And the, and the first lady of this church, the Heavenly Father, we pray you'll continue to bless and be upon this church, the Heavenly Father. Bless in a mighty way. We thank God for all you that are, that are out there online, though, Facebook, YouTube, the Heavenly Father. We thank God for you. We pray that you will, that you will have a listening ear to hear what God has to say, the Heavenly Father. We thank God for you, though. And as we look at the scripture, though, I don't always, I don't want to be remiss, though, but sometimes I do get in trouble, though. I want to thank God for my wife. Amen. Amen. Oh, 36 years of marriage, though. Sometimes, though, we can, we can get a little bit used to things, though, when we should, should be always thanking and praising God for how he had blessed us. Amen. We thank God for that. And, and as we look to your scripture today, though, we want to truly thank God for, for, uh, for our brother Marquez, though, in the, in the scripture and prayer that he gave this morning, though. Oh, amen. We thank God for him. We thank God for his, his lovely wife who did the praise dance, the Heavenly Father. We thank God for her. Though. Amen. And we're just going to look at a few scriptures this moment, but we just want to call your attention to, though, that God is, has, has uh, really truly been speaking today, though, and, and as we uh, continue to um, look towards honoring Black History Month, though, we, we, uh, we find it how God has always put things right in place. Amen. We want to look at in your verse, though, at a couple of scriptures today, though, in New Testament, uh, coming from 1 Corinthians chapter 4. And we're going to look at verses 16 through 18. That's 1 Corinthians chapter 4, 16 through 18. <clears throat> 1 Corinthians chapter 4, verses 16 through 18. I'm going to read it for you here and coming from the New uh New King James Version of Scripture, though, and it says, though, therefore, I urge you, imitate me. For this reason, though, I have sent Timothy to you, who is my beloved and faithful son in the Lord, who will remind you of my ways in Christ as I teach everywhere in every church. Now some are puffed up as 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 no as though I were not coming to you. Amen. Amen. And I want to speak to the church today on, on this thought. Despair, I mean glory beyond despair. Glory beyond despair, though. And as I look, as I think about Black History Month, though, there had to be many moments in history, though, where people was fighting civil rights movement, and they was going uh, beyond the norm, though, and they was and they was threatened with their life, though, and there was con there was probably really was time when they came really despair at what was about to happen. Uh, there was times, though, in our history, though, as, as is noted, though, is there was time when people, they, they was told if you, if you go a certain place, though, if you look a certain place, though, if you do a certain thing, though, that you was going to be killed for what you're doing. There was time, though, they, they had to be despair, though, when, when they thought about their own family's safety, and, 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 you know, in the fact that they had to leave and didn't know whether or not they was coming back. You know, we're talking about glory beyond despair, though. And, and there had to be an encouraging word from the word of God, though, to encourage them to go on despite it all. 
to go on despite it all. Though when we look at the word word despair, though it it means though the complete loss and absent of hope. When it seemed hopeless back in the days, though, and even nowadays, though, depending on what area you go into and what city you go into and what community you go in, though, there, there seems to be a moment of despair. There seems to be an absence of hope, though, that, that nothing is ever going to change, though, and things are always going to seem the same. But God tells us, though, there's glory beyond despair. The glory beyond despair. As we look into Paul, and we look into Paul's scriptures, though, as he always encouraged one another. He encouraged many Christians though, along the, his ministerial ways, though, and his ministerial path, though, to encourage one another, though, that, that if you would just keep on pushing on, there's glory to God. God, Paul's church Episcopal here, though, was written to two different groups of Christians, though, dealing with matters, though, that, that were important to their need at the time. And yet, and yet they address issues that remain relevant today. Yes, yes, he did, though. Paul letters, though, was written as, as uh, integrated, though, whole yet progress from one train of thoughts to the next. Paul's writing, though, were written to correct any errors, though, preach a clear gospel message, though, provide encouragement and address issues of concern. In the scripture, he said, therefore, though, I urge you, I urge you, imitate, though. And, and, and it says, though, in, in the King James Version, though, he, he said, wherefore, I beseech you, I beseech you, I urge you, beseech you, be a follower of me. Uh, uh, and, and, and Paul, in, in his message, what he do, did, though, is that he tried to set a good example for us to follow, though. And we need good examples for us to follow, though. We have people throughout history, though, that, that has set good examples to follow, though, even though it risked them their lives. Paul's passion, though, was to reinforce the good news of the gospel with clarity and remind us that as part of God's creation, we all need to understand that we're all part of God's creation, though, and, and we are aliens in a foreign country, living in, in, in a deteriorating earthly vessel, though our, our body continues to de deteriorate, though, even when we was born. Yeah, yeah, we, we thought that when we was born, though, we could do anything, though. We, when we thought we was young, though, we can go anywhere. We thought we was young, though, we, we could handle any situation, though. But didn't realize, though, even in our earthly body, it was still deteriorating. It was still deteriorating, though, but with a heavenly host. Because God wants to use each and every one of us, though. He wants, wants uh, uh, use, you use him for his ministry. As a part of the body of Christ, though, we are indwelled by the Spirit of God, though, with an eternal inheritance, though, to keep us, uh, you know, to keep for us in heaven. Yeah, yeah, we got, we got things, we got our reward that is waiting in heaven. Our reward is not here on earth, though, but our reward is in heaven, though. Eternal life, though. Everybody want to go to heaven, they ain't going to heaven, though. But if you want to get there, though, we got some good news for you, though. There is a way you can get there, though. If you're willing to commit yourself, though, if you're willing to give up all that you have, though, if you're willing to push on, pushing on, amen, somebody. As Christians, though, our lives inherit two spheres, the seen and the unseen world. Yes, it does. Yes, it does, though. Our physical existence, though, our outer reality, though, our, our spiritual existence, though, or inward reality. In, in, in 2 Corinthians 4, 4, 16, though, 18, though, the apostle Paul said, though, do not lose heart. He said, do not lose heart even as his physical body was wasting away, though, with the effects of uh, uh, deliberating persecution, though, though he, couldn't, he, he could say, though, this because he knew with all certainty that his inward person was being renewed in and day by the ministry of the Holy Spirit. He said, do, do not lose heart, though. Do not lose heart, though. Day by day, 
day by day, though our physical body though are in the in the process of dying. Death, death is a fact of life, though. It's a it's a fact of life, though. Sometimes though we must face uh, eventually. We we don't typically think about this though, though until we start to grow old. No matter how much Grecian formula we may put in our hair, though, no matter what number dye that you use in your hair, though, you're going to get old. Amen, somebody, though. Yeah, yeah, even my wife got one particular color that she used. Amen, somebody. I'm, I'm not mad at her, but every now and then I have to remind her, though, you missed a spot. Amen, somebody, though. You, you, you missed a spot, though. And, and, and she kind of reminded me, you know what number you need to go to the store and get. We, we're, we're getting old. Our body is deteriorating. No matter how much we want to keep our hair, though, I still got some spots that have faded me somehow, somewhere. <laughs> Amen, somebody. It, it used to be thick back in the day, though, when I was young, though, but, but no longer, though, do I see a thick spot anywhere, though. And, and you know, I, I was told, even by my own children, though, you miss a spot, Daddy. You miss a spatch. A <laughs> patch though. You 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 need to get that patch though. And, and no matter how much I try though, it, it it no matter if I if I comb it forward or comb it back though, that spot's still there. Amen. Somebody die, death is a bit, you know, physically though, you know, when we think about this though, uh, uh until we grow old though, but but from the moment we conceive, our flesh is in a slow process until the day we reach our final breath. And I'm not mad about nobody though when you find you a good wig to put on. Just make sure it fits. Amen, somebody. <laughs> when, 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 when we go from the, the times of serious aff affliction and trouble, we may feel this wasting away process more accurately. Yeah, 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 when we used to live 200, 300 pounds with no problem though, but now it becomes a little bit harder. We, we, you know, recently two close loved ones, you know, they, you know, for a long time though, encouraged battle with cancer though, they, they, they lost their battle. They, they, they both experienced an outward wasting away of their body. I, I, I watched my daddy though when when he experienced that decay of the body though and he, he lived a long time though he, he lived beyond the, the time that most people are, are scheduled to live though but but that still was a constant waste of the body yet at the same time though the in, inner spirit though his inner spirit though is shown it was remarkable though because he remembered everything though and when I visit him in the hospital he always encouraged everybody that came and visit yeah, with remarkable grace and light, though, as they are renewed by God day and day, though. See, even as your body deteriorates, though, you still should have an encouraging word from time to time. I'm talking about glory beyond despair. Eternal weight, weight of glory, though. Our, our, our ordeal with cancer, though, wasn't a, a light monument of flexion, though. It, it was the hardest thing for, for that I had to deal with watching my daddy dying and their and their bodies struggle on for more than than two years though year after year though he struggled and during the the breath of suffering i often often talk to my father and my friends though about this about this verse though it, 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 a particular the eternal weight of glory beyond comparison what is this eternal glory weight of glory it's it's a strange verse though at first glance though it may sound like something unpleasant though but it refers to to the eternal reward of heaven yes it does yes it does though you turn to the eternal reward of heaven though our our most extreme difficulties in this life though are light and short-lived when compared to the heavy weighted rewards that will last forever in eternity. Those rewards are beyond all comprehension and comparison. Paul was confident that all true believers would experience the eternal reward of glory. 
in him. I'm talking about glory beyond despair, though. No matter what you go through in this life, though, there is glory. There is a reason to shout. There is a reason to give God praise. Though there's a reason to lift up your holy hands to him, though. There, there is a reason, though. He, Paul, Paul, he often prayed for Christians, though, to keep their eyes on the hope of heaven. He, Paul said, though, back in Ephesians 1.18, he said, The eyes of your understanding being enlightened that you may know what is the hope of his calling. What are the riches of the glory of his inheritance in the saints? Amen, somebody. Paul could say, though, do not lose heart because he believed without a doubt that even the most excruciating trials of his life are minor when compared to the glory of our, internal, our eternal inheritance. I can imagine what it was like back in the days though when 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 we, we didn't have the right to vote and you didn't dare question authority. And when you did question authority, there was a there there was there was there were ancestors back in the day <coughs> that their authority that came to vote anyhow though and and they was thrown in jail though and they were beaten and dogs sick on them for for daring authority though, for daring to do the things that that god had given them the 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 gold glory and god had given them to human right though to be able to do what they need to do in order to honor god though you have to be willing to go through these things though you have to be willing to to put up with the with the despair you have to be willing to put up with the beating you have to be willing to put up with the things though that goes against the norms of the world the apostle paul i mean the apostle peter also lived with the hope of heaven ever in his sight though he said in first peter 3 through five, though, he said, Blessed be the God and the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who according to his abundance mercy have begotten us again to a living hope. He said, A living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. And he goes on, though, in verse four, though, he said, To an inheritance, to an inheritance, though incorruptible and undefiled though and and that does not mean fade away no 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 it, it's not going to just just fade away though but 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 reserve in heaven for you yeah peter peter goes on to say though in verse verse five those that who are kept by the power of god through faith for salvation ready to be revealed in the last time Oh, that's good news, people. That's good news, saints, though. In the, in the last time, though, I, I got to understand, though, that, that there's power in God. If, if I would just hold on. There's, there's power in God, though, through faith, though, believing through faith, though, for, for salvation, though, that it will be re revealed in the last time. Well, my beloved ones, were wasting away. They kept their eyes on things that were unseen. Yes, they did. On things that are unseen, though, sometimes we can get caught up in a moment, though. Well, I don't actually see it, preacher. I don't actually see things, though. But he said, there are things seen and unseen. Amen. So you got to believe in the unseen things, though. You got to keep your eyes on things that were unseen. They focus on eternity, the weight of glory which we're now experiencing fully. Are you disheartened today? No Christian is immune from discouragement. Yeah, sometimes we will get in, in discouragement news from time to time though, but we gotta be encouraged though through the word of God to keep on keeping on. Amen, somebody, we, we, we all lose heart now and then. Maybe your outer self is wasting away. You, you don't walk like you used to. The guys don't whisper at you like they used to. Amen, somebody, though. The girls don't stare at you like they used to, though. But you got to rely on those things, though, that's not on the outer part, but the things that in inside of you. Maybe our outer part is wasted away, but have your 
faith is being tested as never before. And, and it will, you will go through a test from time to time. But you got to hang on in there. Like the apostle and like my loved ones that have gone on to glory. Look to the unseen world for encouragement. Amen, somebody. I may not see what the end is going to be. I may not understand what's going to happen tomorrow. But I'm going to hang on to the unseen things. Amen. Knowing that God is able to do what he's able to do. During unimaginable hard days. I may have some hard days, some difficult days. But I'm going to hang on to whatever the end is going to be. Let your spiritual eyes come alive. Amen, somebody. You got to understand, though, you got some spiritual eyes. Amen, that'll come alive. But the devil want to show us some things to discourage us. You got to hold on to the unseen things, though. You got to let your ears, ears your spine, eyes come alive, though. Look, you know, look through a far-sighted lens. Pass that what you can see. Amen, somebody. Beyond that is transient. With eyes of faith see what cannot be seen and get glorious glimpse, glimpse of eternity. Amen. God is able to help us understand what it means to go from glory beyond despair. Amen. I pray that there is someone here today that you may be living in the despair of the pandemic. You may be living in the despair of mental illness. There is glory beyond despair. And you can give your life over to Christ, even today. Even today, give your life over to Christ. Though All you have to do is admit your sins and the trouble that you go through. Amen. You can reach us on Facebook Live, on YouTube, though. You can, you, can, you, can, you can come to us and call us up. We'll answer the call because there is glory beyond despair. Be encouraged, be blessed, my friends. Amen, amen. God bless you.